Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. There are many famous female rulers that history books have recorded in detail. From Hatshepsut and Cleopatra in Egypt to Boudicca and Elizabeth I in England. But who was the first female ruler of a kingdom? History books tell us that in Egypt, this title belongs to Sobek Neferu, who reigned as pharaoh after the death of Amenemhat IV between 1806 and 1802 BC. She was the last ruler of the 12th dynasty, but is the first known female reigning as a pharaoh with confirmed proof. But, as for the world, the first recorded female ruler is Kubaba, queen of Sumer around 2400 BC some 600 years before Sobek Neferu and more than 900 years before the famous Queen Hatshepsut. But the Giza Plateau in Egypt may hold a secret that could rewrite the history books, that there is in fact another female pharaoh that ruled Egypt in the Old Kingdom. In the past I have made a video on a crude pyramid-like structure just east of the Pyramid of Menkore at Giza. It is said to belong to Kenkawe, a royal woman who lived during the 4th and 5th dynasties. Experts believe she is the daughter of Menkore and the wife of either Shepses Kaf or Yusakaf, or both, the latter being the founder of Egypt's 5th dynasty. Her pyramid-like mastaba is Tomb LG100 on the Giza Plateau, and its proximity to the Pyramid of Menkore is believed to indicate a close relationship with the 4th dynasty king. But who was Kenkawe? What do we really know about her? It is thanks to a paper I've recently been reading by Jane Mulder that is linked below in the description that may shed light on this important yet somewhat unknown ancient royal figure. Her tomb is said to be the last one built at Giza, and when excavated in 1932 by Dr. Selim Hassan, inscriptions were found on fragments of the tomb's granite gateway. They were translated as King of Upper and Lower Egypt, Mother of the King of Upper and Lower Egypt, Daughter of God, Every good thing which she orders is done for her, Kent Kauai. She is also shown on her throne wearing royal regalia of a king, with the flail and uraeus diadem. So it seems conclusive that Kenkawe was a pharaoh, but she does not appear on any king's list, and on her tomb, her name was also not written inside a cartouche. No actual remains were ever discovered inside the tomb, and there is very little we can actually find out about her. A woman who may well be the earliest historical female ruler in history. Some say the hieroglyphs actually say, Mother of two kings of Upper and Lower Egypt. Others say they translate to King of Upper and Lower Egypt and Mother of the King of Upper and Lower Egypt. But it's the title Daughter of God that is most intriguing, as most female royal descendants are usually called King's Daughter. Being known as Daughter of the God implies her legitimacy to the throne, and Kenkawe was likely therefore a pharaoh. Interestingly, the phrase mother of the king of Upper and Lower Egypt also implies that her son got his royal authority from his mother. Many believe that Kenkawe's possible first husband, Shepses Kaf, died whilst their child was still an infant, and so Kenkawe governed the country by herself and was therefore the rightful king of Upper and Lower Egypt as it says on her tomb. It is noticeable that there is no inscription saying King's Wife, which you would expect for an Egyptian queen. Therefore it implies one of two things. Either she was Pharaoh, or she was once a royal princess who legitimised her non-royal husband's title on the throne. Or it could mean both if her husband had died. Dr. Selim Hassan believed her husband was Yusakaf the first king of the 5th dynasty, and being Menkore's daughter, she is the link between the 4th and 5th dynasties of Egypt. Others say she was married to the non-royal Shepses Kaf, who only became king through his marriage, and he died a short time after becoming pharaoh. Some say that with Kenkawe he had two sons, Sahor and Neferirkar, who were only very young when their father died, and so Yusakaf was able to seize power. 
but looking at the accepted dates of the reigns of the two kings, Shepseskaf's reign ended in 2467 BC, and Yusakaf's began in 2465 BC, meaning there is a two year gap between the end of the 4th dynasty and the start of the 5th. Therefore, from what we have seen, Kenkawe may well have reigned as pharaoh for these two years. So, that does seem to make sense, but then we have another problem. There is another pyramid of Kenkawe at Abu Sia, close to that of Pharaoh Neferirkar, who some believe was her son. It's possible that this pyramid belonged to a different Kenkawe, the possible wife of Neferirkar, but interestingly, Inscriptions in the second pyramid give the two Kenkaways the same titles. Mother of the King of Upper and Lower Egypt and King of Upper and Lower Egypt. She is again shown seated on a throne, holding a papyrus scepter and wearing the Uraeus diadem. The difference with this pyramid compared to the one at Giza is that fragments of a pink granite sarcophagus were discovered, as well as mummy wrappings and fragments of stone vessels inscribed with her name. The mortuary temple at the Abu Sir pyramid also had elements characteristic of a king's temple, and it also had its own satellite pyramid. Kenkawe was surely a pharaoh in her own right. So it appears the two pyramid structures may well have been built for the same person, but it is likely she was laid to rest in the one at Abu Sir, the preferred resting place of the 5th dynasty, as well as the location of Yusakaf's Temple of Ra. So, was the tomb at Giza abandoned, or did it serve another function? Maybe one before she was married to Yusakaf. Was it a place of residence during her life before she married the first pharaoh of the 5th dynasty? According to Miroslav Werner, there is clear archaeological evidence that she was buried inside the Abu Sia pyramid, but also that people worshipped her for another 300 years from inside the satellite pyramid. It was like a temple that was dedicated to her. It is important to add that the story of the Giza Kenkawe is by no way clear cut, and many believe that the two pyramid like structures were in fact for two different people. There is apparently writing inside Neferirkar's pyramid that calls Kenkawe the king's wife. But not everyone agrees. Some think it may actually translate to king's consort, possibly a co-ruler, and could therefore be referring to Kenkawe as his mother. Researcher Jane Mulder believes that the two Kenkawe pyramids were made for just one, and that this queen ruled as a king. And, after looking at the evidence, I have to agree. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, Please like the video and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.